I'll be doing this lettering here across this banner. It's going to say Jaycock Sagon, and uh, the lettering style is a modified Roman, which is a thick and thin letter with serifs. Serifs are the feet on the letter and sometimes on the top as well. To do it, I'm going to be using a, a lettering brush here. This is a number six by Langnickel, and uh, you'll notice it has a fat part and a thin part. The thin part of the lettering I'm going to be stroking down like that, and the fat part of the letter, and I'll be using the fat of the brush and stroking down like this. So, we've got some pale yellow paint here that I've mixed up. I hope it's the proper consistency. If not, we'll have to take a break and thin it a little bit, but so far, so good. What I'm doing now is I'm palleting the brush and shaping the edge of it on the edge of the can here as opposed to just dipping in and starting to paint. That looks pretty good. I got my mall stick here to keep my hands up out of the wet paint. And let's see what I can do. between the letters. The spacing between the letters is almost as important as the letters themselves. It creates a rhythm. This swash on the S here, I've got right in between the G and the A, and I'll be playing a little game with the A you'll see in a minute. This uh, whole thing is reminiscent of the year 1906, the year Jay Cox was formed. And so what I'm doing is, is something that might have been done back in the day. Now this cross piece on the A, I've got right in between this part of the S and that part of the S. And this swash on the S, I'll have right between the A and the G. The beauty of this lettering brush is that I can go from thin to fat, back to thin again, just in one swish, just like you just saw. If I had a pointed stylus, it'd take me all day to get a shape that perfect. Not only does the direction that I move the brush make a thick and a thin, but also the pressure I put on the brush makes a thick and a thin. Here's roughly the width of the brush, but for this part of the end, I'm going to really smash it down and then roll it off. Here I'm going to start with a sweep and then a roll. Sweep, now I roll and get a thin. Roll again, and get a point. Now over here I brought the cross piece of the A way out because of our dynamics with the S. Because here we have this vertical on the end here. I'm not going to play that game. I'm just going to make a little cross piece like that. 
and we're done. You might notice the top parts of the A are above the line of the, of the lettering. The bottom points of this W are below the line. In normal lettering, this is only done very slightly. What happens is, is that there's so little of the letter up top here that if you made it the same uh, height of the rest of the letters, when you get back, it would look shorter because there's very little artistic weight up there. Because this was uh, done in 1906 at a time when design was over the top, I'm exaggerating this a little bit. The same with the points on the W. You can see right away how much more lively the first part of this word is as opposed to the second part. This just really jumps.